Ubiquiti have just released a new update for the Unify Network application, and that is 7.2.91. And in today's video, I'm going to give you a quick update of what some of those updates are and what's different from a previous version. So quickly running through this list, there's a few things that I just wanted to highlight out that we are going to take a look at. So there's now the option to add local DNS records for clients. This is really good if you don't have a specific DNS server um, to resolve the names internally. So you have the uh, Unify network application that can now do that for you. There's now global switch settings and global network settings that we had previously. There's some open VPN client support now. So that actually also requires 2.5.x or 1.13.x UDM Pro or UDM Pro SE, whichever one you're running. There's also an improved backup and restore process. Now, I haven't actually gone through this yet from different console models, so I need to actually have a look at this to see how this works. Uh, better failover events for 2.5. I know sometimes the failover can be a bit hit and miss when it works and when it doesn't, so there's an improvement on that. There's some more UX updates in terms of the look and feel, so we'll go through some of those that we're looking at that have been updated from a previous version. And then finally, if we go down to the bottom, there's a bunch of fixes. Now, I'm not going to run through the fixes, but yeah, if you wish to read them, I'll leave a link down in the comments below. I have two different UDM Pros running. So one's a UDM SE, sorry, and one's a UDM Pro. Uh, the UDM SE is running the latest network application, which is 7.2.92, and you'll see that on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we're running 7.1.66, which I think was the last version before the updates. Maybe it might have been a few iterations more, but nothing major just there. So looking on the front page, we have a few different things. Now, I don't know if this was there previously, but I've noticed this just now where they actually have the logo of the service provider, which is quite interesting. So there isn't the one on the right, which is Vodafone, but for Virgin Media, it is there. Secondly, a new thing is you have the internet health. I actually had a, a bit of an issue updating to this this morning and I had to do a quick restore. So it doesn't show me the last 12 hours of my internet health, but you get the idea if it's not good, it's red, if it's good, it's green. So you get the idea of the internet quality and you've got the speed test that you can run now. But what's disappeared is if you look just behind my head is the download and upload utilization. So that's actually disappeared from here. It's no longer there. It's a small little bit here, which just tells you about the activity, that's it. It doesn't actually give you the scale of how much you're using. The actual overview itself, the traffic and client device type is the same. The next thing that's slightly changed a little bit is if I scroll down here and here, you can see now we have Wi-Fi clients before and now we have the most active access points. Now I'm sure some of this can be changed and edited, but that's what's there at the moment. And then you can click on it and drill down into the information if you wish to do so. It just takes you to the access point within the network or within the device settings, sorry. Then we have most active clients and yeah, that's about it on the front page. Now the devices themselves, not a lot has changed on here. So I'm just gonna brush past this one. Now we have client devices. This is where you're gonna be able to add the DNS option. So if I just click on my Raspberry Pi, for example, um, and we'll click on this TV over here, for example. Uh, if we go to settings, you'll see that we have a name for it here, uh, fixed IP and lock it to an access point. If I go this side, and we have a look at the Raspberry Pi, which is actually hardwired in. I can go to settings and you can give it a name if you wish to do so. And you've got fixed IP. So that's the only condition to this. You do have to give it a fixed IP for the static DNS entry. And then you can give it a name. So I can go rpi.insidewire.local, for example. Um, so yeah, you can give it a full host name or even a, that's just one that will resolve internally. If you can go .com or .co.uk, whichever uh, domain suffix you are using. In terms of the network, there isn't anything really too different here. I haven't enabled everything on the right hand side, so you can't really see much statistics, but you can see that what it would look like if it was enabled. So nothing's really changed here too much. Then you've got the Wi Fi insights. Again, we've seen a slight update in this in terms of the performance bar. You can, you can see what's using the most data and what it has the best and worst signal strength. So you can have a look down here. I have what looks like actually the unified chime, I believe, is what it looks like. Uh, you can see that doesn't have the best of signal strength of where it is at the moment. But if I go across to this side, the strong signal, you can see this is a actually a smoke alarm from Nest um, that has probably the strongest Wi-Fi signal because it's right next to the Wi-Fi access point. So that's some other difference. And the final one on the actual homepage is the traffic inspector. So that's actually disappeared from here. And we have now something called system logs. 
it doesn't give you the full logs that you would probably want to see what's happening on the network, but you have admin access, it gives you the threats, and it gives you user activity as well. So depending on what you're looking for, there are some logs that are starting to come. Now, I hope Unify expand on this and include some more uh, informational logs and more useful logs for debugging, uh, but there's nothing like that as of yet on this. And then we move on to network settings. Now, previously we had global AP settings, which you can see just here. Um, we had that on a previous version, but actually if we go to networks now, we have global network settings too and global switch settings. So if I go back to networks on here, none of that seems to exist. So you can see that you can change some settings here to affect all of the switches and networks, depending on what you're changing. So that's useful. You don't have to go through all the individual ones to make changes now. On the internet, this is now slightly different as well. We now have uh, a chart on here which shows you what your internet sources are, what your primary set at, what your secondary set at, and you can literally just choose the drop down box and you can choose what you want as your primary and secondary uh, WAN and LAN, uh, WAN for example. Um, you can have now failover and distributed, I think that came in a previous version, so you can actually have them balanced if you had to or you can have it as a failover. And if you want the automatic speed test, this is another feature, you can actually enable that and it will say when do you want to do it daily, weekly, monthly, and what sort of time did you want to do this. So all new additional features that have been added in here. The next one is the VPN section. So inside Teleport VPN, uh, you now have the option to see what the device is. So if I go to show table, you can actually see we have the iPhone device and when it was last connected. Whereas on a previous version, you would just have the link, the time elapsed and when it was created. So that's another useful thing. So you can see the type of device still waiting for this to come to desktop and I know it's in UID but it's not available for their general Unify access yet. Not that I'm aware of, if it is, let me know down in the comments below because that's a feature I'm really looking forward to. And just the new one that's just been added in is create VPN client. So this now allows you to use the open VPN client so you can connect to any of the open VPNs that you have. So I know there's been some calls for this so they finally added this in but I'm sure they want to expand a little bit more on this as well with the VPN side of things. Next is traffic management. So we actually have now the routes and the new rules. Uh, previously we had in the previous version we had the speed limits and schedules coming soon. Now they exist within here. So I can go and create, allow an app for example or an app group whatever you've created. So you select for example Facebook and then a target device. So you can go all devices, groups, or even individual devices if you want to block it on an individual device. You can have this on a schedule, so you can have it always, every day, every week, one time only, custom. Say for example you wanted to block it for a month for example, so here we click apply, that's one month, and you want to repeat on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday for example. Uh, you can do that and then you have a start and end time, and also if you want to set a speed limit, so uploads and upload and download, so if I actually go Mbps, because I don't think anybody works in uh, kilobits per second anymore, you can actually restrict the upload, upload and download speed. And then you can give it a description, so whatever you want to call it. So that's now been added in, which is quite cool. And that is really the main updates for this Unify update. Now, I hope you found this video useful. If there is anything I've missed, just drop it down in the comments below, or if there's anything useful that you found in this video, what are you looking forward to in this update? Remember, hit the subscribe button and like and comment as well. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.